Hello there, uh, welcome to this, the first of five tutorials that will take you through uh, the basics of how to use the OpenVDB uh, viewer for Linux and Mac. Um, this is available on GitHub and all the links that you might need for that are in the uh, description of this video. Um, so we'll start off with the introduction of the basics. Firstly, what is the OpenVDB viewer? Um, basically, it is a application standalone that will allow you to open up uh, files of the OpenVDB standard. Um, look at the data, sort of see if there's any issues in there, um, and it's generally just sort of a tool for um, doing them. Um, so the OpenVDB library itself was made by DreamWorks and is available uh, from openvdb.org, which again is linked in the description. Um, so first you need to download and build the library, uh, which if you don't know how to, there is a description on my blog, which again is also linked in the description, I'm good with those links. Um, so please check that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to build the application. So once it's been downloaded from GitHub, um, if you've cloned it in into a folder called OpenVDB Viewer, um, within a terminal, um, so on, on Linux or Mac, this is on Linux, but it works exactly the same on Mac, you need to go into OpenVDB Viewer um, and you'll see all of the files that are included with it. Now there are a couple of ways we can build this. The first is uh, we can basically just run QMake on it. So you'll need to have Qt installed on your system for this to be built. That's one of the dependencies which you'll find in the README, um, which I'll just show you quickly actually. Um, so in the README, if you pop into README, you can see all the information about it. You've got the version, um, quickly think about it, uh, your application requirements, how to build it, um, which is similar to what I'm about to tell you, but if you prefer to read and to listen, that's absolutely fine. So the first we're going to do is we're just going to build it through QMake. Um, so it's quite simple. Uh, within the root folder, you literally run QMake, um, which will have created uh, a make file. Um, and all you need to do then is run make. Now, um, I'm going to use minus J8 purely to speed up the process, um, but do it however, however, however you can on your computer. Um, so this will run through the build process. I guess it's building there through against the OpenVDB library. Um, this is running against the OpenVDB 2.0. Point one, um, but I have tested it against 2.3 as well, and that's fine. So shouldn't be any issues. Um, so once it's built, uh, you'll see the application itself, OpenVDB Viewer, um, which if we run, will open up. You need to make sure that your paths are set up correctly to find the correct libraries at runtime um, within your Bash RC, um, which I will have a quick look at. Utab, I think, is probably the best here. Uh, library path. Yeah, so I've my uh, I know my library is in uh, user local lib, um, which is in my load library path. So make sure that's all set up on whatever system you are using. So that's one way of building it, um, which is the straight simple build. If, if however you prefer to uh, look at the source before you build it, or you prefer to make any changes, or whatever it is you plan to do. Um, you can also open it within Qt Creator. Um, the dot profile has been supplied with you. Um, so again, if you've got it set up, how, how you open it up in Qt Creator? Uh, obviously, set your configuration properly. You don't want any shadow builds. And again, it's all your source will pop into. Qt Creator it's all set up correctly for Windows and Mac, so it will automatically pick up on your system and then set it up accordingly. Um, so you can have a look at all the source if you like. Um, once you're done there, just run QMake again, or again generate the make file just as we did before, and then build project. Um, ah, what I have done there is forget to put minus J8 in here to speed things up. So let's we'll do a uh, we'll do a clean all. Run it again just to make sure, and we'll build it again. So, again, that'll do exactly the same uh, build within Qt. So hopefully, it won't take too long. There we go, and again, we can run it straight from there. Um, so, that's nice and easy, depend entirely up to you. Um, we'll just stay with this now, seeing as it's open. Right, so now the app, now it's actually open. Um, obviously, you can either run it from the command line, from Qt, however you want to run it, that's fine. Um, I'll just run you through the UI quickly. So, uh, firstly, we've got your menu up here. So you've got your file for exiting, opening a file, clearing a file, I'll run through it later. 
again remove resets transforms cameras information and help um, so this is your menu bar down the bottom you've just got a couple of options um, for OpenGL which I'll run through in a second and on your right is your tab which is where you can choose options to interact with the file itself um, so you've got four different tabs um, each one of these tabs will take up its own tutorial um, so if you get stuck with any tab in particular just find the right tutorial and you'll be all wonderful. So quickly I'll just show you how to um, check which version you're running. Uh, currently you're well, the only version out at the time of this is 1.0 so just literally go to help about open VD viewer um, and it will open up, tell you the version, who made it, which is me and anything you want to sort of send. Um, so just check you got a good version, uh, the right version sorry um, which at the moment will be one but obviously in the future if you have any problems it could be to do with that. Okay, so obviously we've got the application, but we need to actually they have nothing to open up in it first, which is not very helpful. Um, so what we need to do is we need to go and get a VDB file. Now the easiest way you might have one lying around your computer, I have no idea. Um, if you don't, the easiest way is to go to openvdb.org forward slash downloads. I think downloads. Was it download? No, that's not it. Download. I might just need to go through OpenVDB to be honest. There we go, it's download, not downloads. Um, so, this is actually where you'll download the library from. So, it's GitHub, Houdini, all that kind of stuff. But if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll find some sample models which you can download. Um, so, which one should we get? I think we'll just download the teapot. It's a nice, simple one to do. And we'll also get Smoke 2 because I quite like that one. Uh, there we go. So once they've downloaded, I'll just pop back into the shell. New tab. Uh, we'll put these on desktop, I think, make things nice and simple. So we'll just move from downloads. Hello, what have we got in there then? There we go. Use our part to here. And we'll just unzip that and then remove and it's all finished it has lovely move that to here as well and do exactly the same now you can get VDB files I believe from things like Houdini which I know VDB is uh, integrated entirely into um, so you might have some yourself so you should have to try them they should be absolutely fine as well but for now we'll just use these example ones. So now we've got the two VDB files. So now we can swap back through to the viewer um, and you can either go file open or on Linux it's control O or on Mac it's command O um, to pop open the uh, file browser. Uh, we'll go find the right one. We'll go to Utah T port first. So click your VDB file, click open um, and it'll ask you if you want to do load high resolution. Um, this basically within the VDB file there are two resolutions so you've got your VDB tree and then you've got the high resolution data points which are your individual points um, so it's up to you if you want to open them straight away if you choose yes it will be slower to open and be slightly higher memory intensive but you can always load them at a later date if you don't want to um, so for now we'll just click yes and it will again ask you um, are you sure in case you want to crash your computer which is not always fun um, yes a couple of seconds and it will open the file. By default it will show you um, the VDB tree um, but you can toggle between them with your render mode which um, I'll sort of show you more later but you can play with that. Uh, in terms of the viewport itself uh, you have complete control so to move the camera around you need to hold alt and then click and drag the mouse uh, which will spin the camera around uh, the object and if you want to spin the object itself just click and drag and that actually rotates the object, which it's not that easy to see, but you can sort of see with the grid staying still that the uh, world is not moving. Uh, we can also right click and drag to move the object around, which you'll see is happening there. And you can scroll wheel in and out to zoom in and out to the origin and the object. Um, if you sort of put yourself in a strange position, so there we go, that's a bit odd, um, we can go to camera and click reset camera or shift R and it will put the camera back to the origin wherever it started um, obviously it's a bit hard to see because the object itself is a bit wonky um, so to reset the object what we can do um, we can click Control R um, so shift after the camera 
reset control r for the object and that will put it back to where it started um, and if we sort of want to do both at the same time so that's gone there we can just press r reset the scene everything gets reset uh, so in terms of the volume of you've loaded in the high resolution data set um, you can, if so, if say you've loaded in the horizon data set which we have here, and you think, ah, it's kind of clogging up my memory, I want to do something else, that's fine. Um, just press delete or go to volume, remove, remove high, high resolution data, click that, it gets unloaded. Um, your VDB tree is still there, so you can still see that, and if you want to load it again, you can simply click load high resolution, it will ask you to do it again. Uh, right, so that's the menu, I think. What have we got? Yes, so what we've we got now, we've got um, down the bottom, so your menu's obviously up there, down the bottom we've got um, all these options, so we can do three, three options, so if we get rid of the VDB tree for now, um, so if you see by default there's a grid drawn at the centre of the world, that's a bit of reference, if you don't want that, click show grid or show on and off, uh, point size and line width are to do with GL options, so you can just change the thickness of the uh, point lines by simply changing that number. Um, and once there's a high resolution data set loaded in, we'll load back in now. Remove VDB tree. Um, you can change the size of the points as well. Um, so that's entirely up to you. So that is a very sort of, if you want to just have a quick look at a uh, VDB file, um, you can. You can clear any file you have loaded in. Control Shift C or just click Clear removes all data. You can start again. So let's open up the other one we downloaded. Uh, just Smoke Two. Uh, yeah, we'll load in high resolution. Click Yes and turn it on. And you can see it has loaded in this one. So if you want to quick get started really quickly, look at some files, um, download them uh, from OpenVDB, and you should be able to open them straight up in here. So that, obviously we can then close the application um, and that will clear all the data and handle all the information for you. Now, in terms of documentation, just quickly run through that for you, um, within the root folder of your download you'll see there's a doxygen file, so a doxy file. Um, if you have doxygen installed, just simply run doxygen within that folder, um, it'll build the documentation for you, uh, and then what we can see is if we just quickly pop in to where we were, within the doc folder, HTML, uh, you can find index.html, open with whatever you want to open your HTML in, um, and you'll have your full documentation that you need. Um, so have a have a peruse of this, and uh, see what you can find. Um, any issues let me know, all my contacts on the uh, links below. Um, in the next episode we will be looking at the render tab, uh, which is the first tab in the viewer and we'll be looking through all these what these different options will do and what you can do with them so yeah thanks for listening and i'll see you next time